Here's a car that really puts the auto back into automobile. It's a 2006 VW Passat, and it is moving around this parking lot without a driver. No human is inside it, and no one is steering it by remote control. Nicknamed Junior, this robot car probes its environment with rotating laser scanners, which paint a 360-degree image of the surroundings 10 times a second. Then Junior decides for himself, using artificial intelligence software running on powerful computers, just how best to proceed along the route that has been assigned to him. Sebastian Thrun leads the Stanford engineering team that's teaching Junior how to drive. You have to build cars that can understand the world, they can understand other vehicles, sense them, perceive them, make predictions, and interact with them. So you have to understand if you come to a, to a stop sign uh, that the other car might be there first, it might want to go first, there are certain rules that govern regular traffic, and we have to be able to adhere to these rules. So we have to make machines that replicate human thinking in that specific domain. Watching Junior's every move is a group of inspectors from the government's Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA for short. They're the serious looking guys in the white shirts. They've come to Mountain View to evaluate Junior, to test its ability to maneuver in city street conditions along a course laid out on a parking lot at Shoreline Amphitheater. Stanford won't know until August, but if Junior performs to the DARPA judge's satisfaction, then the team can advance to the next round in DARPA's Urban Challenge, when, on November 3, as many as 20 robot car building teams will compete for a $2 million grand prize. For the most part, Junior ran his routes without a problem. But at one point, he simply stopped and refused to go around a parked car. Apparently, his computer brain was programmed with a little too much caution. After finishing the other tests, DARPA let Team Stanford and Junior have another go at it. Again, as he approached the parked car, Junior stopped and seemed to give the situation careful thought. This time, however, a more confident Junior drove right around the stopped vehicle. After his test drives were over, Junior got rock star treatment from the media. Okay, so this is um, Junior. Sebastian Thrun, clearly pleased with Junior's performance, showed off the car's main features. It's equipped for, for driving by a computer. And the way you see this, first you see the full trunk is full of computers. We're going to open it for you a sec. Um, you see a computer system where the trunk usually is. There's a big computer station here. There's a GPS system over here a connection hub over here, a power control box over here, and this box over here is the interface to the car itself. So this box over here talks to the car and lets us, by computer, actuate things like steering, brake, and gas, and throttle. Then, also important, is this perception of the vehicle. So you see down here, sensors on the wheel over here, these guys over here, slightly dusty, they are sensors, and they are able to perceive the environment and build a model inside the vehicle as to how the environment looks like. And the last important thing is when you get inside the driver's cabin, this looks very much less like a very normal driver cabin, except there's a few extra switches. And these are the switches where you go from human control to computer control. So when you flip those, the car drives itself. And you have multiple switches for things like gearbox and throttle and turn signals and so on. That all together is the car. The last thing that I can show you is called software. So what really drives this machine is not the hardware, it's the smarts, it's in the computer programs, it's the artificial intelligence. And that's what this car does exceptionally well. For Stanford's autonomous vehicle team, this project is about something much more audacious than winning big prize money in the DARPA challenge. After all, that's something they've already done back in 2005. For them, it's really about building the future. I'm very confident at some point during my lifetime, we're going to see cars that drive themselves. We're going to have a button in my car that says, bring me home to my garage and fall asleep, it's going to drive me home and I'm going to be better off because every year in this nation we kill something like 42,000 people in traffic accidents 
mostly because of human error. If we can make cars safer, occasionally drive themselves, we can make blind people drive, we can make old people drive that otherwise couldn't drive anymore, children, or me when I'm fatigued or, God forbid, had a beer too much after a night in the pub. Um, I think there's so many benefits of this technology, it's going to be really great to have.